Hello, you're listening to a Talk of Spirit anime cast. My name is Andrew, and I'm joined here with Chris. Yo. Today's episode is a discussional podcast episode where we talk about the news that seems important to us, dive into our community, answer some questions from our great community members, and then say goodbye. So, yes, Chris, how has the last two weeks been for you? Been okay. How about okay. you? Good. Good. Well, besides, like, the last two days, because I stubbed my toe really bad, and like, then I couldn't sleep. <laughs> It's been a bad two days of, of sleep for me, but I, I think I'm doing better now. So I got a nice like 10, 12 hours of sleep last night. So unintentionally, it's like a wake up and it's like, oh my gosh, it's 10, 15. I must have been really tired from the previous night. Not I, sleeping. Stayed, I stayed up way too late last night. Yeah, I was up until one o'clock, which is like four hours l- later than normal for me. no three hours later than normal you didn't have to work today so it's fine <laughs> it's, it's always fine well you're not supposed day. to sleep in late you're supposed to get up at one the same time every day otherwise oh, yeah. it it uh, messes up your your sleep schedule right yes yes your your sleep therapy session has now begun how is it going everybody today we're talking about <laughs> how much you should sleep in order to get a healthy body <laughs> clear complexion <laughs> And shiny white teeth. Yes, your sleep does indicate your shininess of your teeth. <laughs> well, I did uh, I did get up at like 9 o'clock, so I didn't sleep in too bad late, but it, it, it is... That's much more than you usually do. Yeah. That way, is much more than you usually do. Way more. I am not a 5 o'clock waker-upper. I am like, at, at the latest, it's going to be, or earliest is probably 7.37-ish. 7, 7 is probably my breaking point. I, I'm not getting up before then. <laughs> Of course, I like to stay up until 11 at midnight, so... That's no, kind we, of instead, we just have to deal with listening to your alarm every Go 10 over minutes. and over and <laughs> over and over. <laughs> I've had times where I literally just sleep through it, and it's like, holy crap, that's bad. But, yeah. I think I slept through mine this morning. I think I just need to change. I, I think at some point, you get used to your alarm clock, and then you have to kind of change it to a different tone. Um, it was funny, because at some point, we got that uh, that alarm clock that was the... The, the fake collide liner they had like an Ilya alarm clock at some point and it's like it technically i don't really know that i want to get woken up by Ilya, but at the same time i think like it being a voice of somebody like wakes you up a lot quicker like you 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 mind recognize that it's not a chime it's a person and then you you snap to it really quick so it was like funny that i at some point had that and i was like Wow, I woke up really quick when that thing went off because, like I said, I think it's just an internal thing. I have I have a habit of waking up before my alarm. Yeah, I've only done I did that when I was like back in like when I first started working when I graduated high school. I was able to do that, and then ever since then, I don't know. I think internet broke me. Possibly. So it was about the time when I got really into the internet. <laughs> the internet just screwed up my sleep schedule entirely. <laughs> You find YouTube rabbit holes or something, and you're not going to sleep. That, that is the worst. That is the worst. <laughs> uh, it's, it's the worst. But no, I, I've been watching Emma. We got a review copy of Emma, the Victorian romance story or something like that. So I'll be I'll be doing a review of that soon. I'm actually really enjoying it. I was surprised how much I was enjoying it. I mean, I should have... I should have known that it would have been a good story just because of the fact that they did a whole campaign and ju- everything just for it. But it's, just, it's one of those ones where I, I've i seen it several times throughout the years. But it's just like, do I want a Victorian romance story from Japan is always like the thing of like, yeah, I'm not jumping to watch that. But they actually did a really good job. And the dub they did on it is really, really good. They, they had some really good actors on that one. Now, granted, it still has the issue of like they completely changed lines in order to fit, you know, lip flaps and stuff. And so it, it you kind of feel like you're missing something. But... I think overall they're capturing the context of each, you know, scene, and it's got a lot of really goofy moments. I I really love the uh, the Indian prince. He's he's fantastic, and um, a lot of great moments in it so far. But yeah, I think I'm like, um, I think I'm on the last disc, so like six more episodes, and I'll be done with it. But it's been a lot of a lot of fun, more more so than I thought it would. So I'm happy about that. <laughs> I really thought it was gonna be a slog, but no, it's starting out really good. So. And I don't have, then I have to just figure out uh, how I'm going to rip the Blu-rays again because I think that the program that I had before was a was a trial in beta, so I have to find out if they actually have it available because it was a really good ripping thing. Then I have to put it all into a editing software and then make a video. Ooh, so you get to do moving video er, pictures this time? Yeah, they pretty much told me anything from Nozomi Entertainment, right stuff that I could do that with, and if I have any problems, let them know. So awesome. 
I did the um, uh, on my Buddhist that way, so and they allowed it. So thanks. <laughs> I finally got a company that's willing to say, "Go ahead, make a review on YouTube, and not be afraid of of copyright strikes." You know, hey, I can tell people about your show if you just <laughs> let me. <laughs> uh, it is what it is. I, I had a long conversation with somebody from Funimation's legal team, and it was it was it was a it sucks, but at the same time, I kind of understand their viewpoint. It's just it all comes down to the original owners in Japan, which that's that's where it sucks because you can't communicate with them or they won't communicate with you. I've tried to. <laughs> they won't communicate with you. But eh, it is what it is. Um, what else do we do? We, we, we're still playing Genshin. Um, both got our Eulas, so that's good. Yep. Um, having my usual issue with Mora, which is frustrating the heck out of me. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Tired of that. We had the next patch was announced. I am extremely disappointed, but that's understandable. <laughs> Just not enough. I want the new zone. I need a zone. Right. Actually, the thing that I was thinking of the other day was like, why can't we have like a timed reset? Like if you if you play for such a long period of, or if you have an area, let's say let's say you have a zone unlocked for a certain amount of time or maybe if you 100% a zone at a certain amount of time, you just have a cooldown period on it, of course. You don't want people to exploit this. But be able to reset the zone. Like, why can't you? Like, I literally, besides a couple of them being like 97, 99%, I have 100% every zone. I have nothing to do in the zones anymore, besides kill monsters, which is, you can only do for so long. There's some way of being able to reset it that you wouldn't be able to exploit it. I'm not saying be able to reset it every day and be able to just make bucos of more and stuff, but something to do. I I agree. I mean, the chest resetting would probably be nice, but there is there is complications involved in that. Like the resources that they don't want to um to flood the system with, and and I agree with you because the the, the biggest That's problem I mean, is, is giving like a six month cooldown or something like that. Yeah the the biggest problem I see with the that game is its resource crunch if you want to call it that or it's it, it it's basically starved on its resources you yeah. can't you can't, I can't do, raise characters exactly you can't Literally. you can't do much <laughs> I have of no more. anything <laughs> without um because it, everything is based on your racing and that is absolutely your raisins the... <laughs> i like how he says raisins raisins resin raisins i think it's the proper way of pronouncing it i'm just saying well that's the problem that's just like clee clay Chi Chi, Kiki, it's like this whole aspect of like all these languages they've translated it to and they all say their name are different. We were talking about Ganyu the other day being like a, what was it, Shon or something like that? It wasn't Ganyu. <laughs> it was definitely not Ganyu. But like I said, like Kli, Kle, it, it's, 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 it's weird. Well, too, many, too, too many different languages for this stuff. <laughs> but no, it's that's the problem is like I want to raise other characters. I want to have fun experimenting with other characters. But what happens? I spend an entire... I'll spend maybe a day or two using my resin to get the materials to raise up a character. And then I will spend each day after that using my entire day's worth of resin to get Mora to afford to raise one artifact. Then I'm done. Next day, spend all my resin getting Mora to raise the second artifact. There's something wrong with that. Yeah. <laughs> There's something wrong with you taking literally a month worth of resin just to raise one character up to not even max. I'm just talking about usability. 70 with, you know, 12 artifacts. Oh, absolutely. And, and that that's that's the thing that irritates me is only being able to do four bosses a day. That's yeah. that's just dumb. I, like I'm you, sorry. You I, I done in no time. Yeah, I, I exactly. I'll, I'll be done with it. And that and that's, that's what I've said before is you should encourage people to play your game, not necessarily restrict them to only being able to do a certain amount of things in a certain amount of time. Now, I understand casual people not being able to do uh, have the time to invest, but it's, it's balancing burnout versus burnout versus boredom. Yeah, basically. And it's like I. I, I admit that I think that they are doing a good job keeping it to where you can't burn out on it, but I think it's too much to the point where people get bored. Mm-hmm. And I've had that before. Like, about six months ago, I got bored of it. Like, I, there's nothing other to do. I just go in there, do commissions, which take literally five minutes to the most, and I'm done. Nothing else to do. Get my get my primos, and I'm done. <laughs> which is, 
sad and again but it, it, it goes back to the idea of and then you have the artifact system which is irritates me i'm trying to get four pale flame and it's literally an entire day's worth of resin just to get nothing but milliliths their artifact percentage rates are stupid skewed and and and, and that that that's the one thing that that i mean even me not focusing on artifacts yes i'm i'm leaving myself behind on that side but um focusing on characters i literally am sitting here i can go in because right now i i, I finally got clee um ganyu somebody else off the yeah every time every time i have to, he has me kill somebody i have to go in there and use his <laughs> raise up his artifacts i'm like you're not gonna do enough damage for me i'm raising your artifacts um <laughs> I I, th- I know Klee and Ganyu for sure are are on their way to ninety. So um, because I've already ascended them, and, and I'm just the the, the it, it's insane how many um, how many uh, experience things that you have to use on a character to get them f- from eighty to ninety. Mm-hmm. Um, now like I'm working on huh? Is it like two hundred or something like that? Yeah, I don't I don't know off the top of my head, and it's but it is stupid. Um, it was easy on Ganyu because I, I had a little bit backed up and I just knocked out a whole bunch of, um, uh, ley lines to finish her off. Klee, using, however, using resin on cl- ley lines is, feels terrible. <laughs> it's not, I mean, that's not my whole argument with the whole Mora thing. It's like having to spend an entire day of Mora or resin on Mora is like, I feel like I've gotten nowhere. <laughs> Yeah, and, and and then and then for the the weapons, yeah, I it took me forever to realize that that's what the whole point of the uh, magical crystals is for. You you use your resin on weapon experience through those. Yeah, I've accidentally done that a couple times. I don't like it. <laughs> <laughs> not not happy with that. It's like I want something to use that stuff on besides that. That's what they need to do. Is I, like I had one of those uh, missions with the the Halo trolls. One of them wanted something that was blue and solid, and I'm like, yes, I can get rid of one. <laughs> I can finally use this tank crap. Yeah, it's not. Yeah, anyways, uh, but, but yeah, it's it's going well. It, it's it's still a fun game. I still enjoy it. But my thing is like, I didn't, the thing I enjoy about it, and I keep putting that in their stupid feedback thing. It's like the thing I enjoy is is experimenting with characters. I wish I could do that more, because I've I've gone up so high in world level. I have to have a character fully maxed out before they're useful. And it's hard to do that when you have to spend an entire month of raising them up is the problem. Really? Yeah. It is it is what it is. It is what it is. But um And 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 in a, a lot of cases experimenting with a character is also experimenting with team comps and you mm-hmm. can't really experiment with the team comps because you have to raise practically four characters. I mean, unless one of your characters that's already raised is one of them. <laughs> well, yeah. I mean, the example of that is when I first started playing, Fischl was my main, and I had Beidou behind her, and then I had, I think, Mona and I think Barba early on, because I didn't really have any other healer. And so my comp was built around, like, you know, electro charging and stuff like that. And so when it came time to get a new character, I think when I got Klee... It's like suddenly I'm having to build up a melt character along with her and I have to build up, a, you know, yeah, I can use Vaporize with Mona, but I'm having to build up these other characters in order to accent that new main DPS. You can't just swap out main DPSs. You have to build characters to accent them. Right. It's the whole idea. The whole system is elemental mastery and reactions. So right. every time you get a new character, you have to build a team around them. And you can't do that when you have to basically build four characters out of nowhere yeah i've got I'm like like what i was saying earlier is i'm i'm i've got ganyu and klee pretty much finished off i'm working on literally like i'm I'm actually working on my entire cast but um my main the main ones that i'm focusing on right now is like uh gene i gotta i want to finish her off um i've got chi chi on the way and uh and venti on the way and those are for main slots. I still have, like I said, I'm doing the entire cast because I'm tired of picking and choosing, okay, I can raise this one character. I I need to get all of these characters up. And so 
Which is literally impossible because it is, it is, to get. it is literally impossible. It's like, it's funny because early on, I thought talent books would be the annoying thing to raise up. And no, talent books is like the easiest thing to do. It's the it's artifacts, experience, and mora is the problem. So I guess to get in there, like I said, it's balancing boredom with, with burnout. And like I said, I, technically they're doing a good job of re- preventing burnout. But at the same time, it's like, I kind of want to mess with things. I want to mess around with these builds and... Right now, it's it's uh, Bennett and um, Waterboy. Shink Shink mm-hmm. Show, yeah, Shink Show is the other one that's kind of my focus currently, just to get them up to seventy max. But yeah, that's our Genshin talk for the, <laughs> the week. <laughs> it's kind of like fake grand order. It's like I wonder, man, how many people shut us off because they don't want to listen to us talk about Genshin, Genshin Impact? I gotta put a timestamp in every description just to know where to jump forward. But yeah, it's, it's been fun. Either way, either way. Uh, I guess we should get on the news. We have we have some news bits, some news that should be important to people because it's important to us, that it's important to you, that's important to us. Uh, first one is that Studio Kai has reported a loss of 165 million yen in 2020. I hope that's changing. <laughs> of course, right now, the big one that I've been kind of, you know, chiming at the top of the mountain for everybody to watch i'm literally making videos every week just to get the word out is super cup and i think super cup's fantastic it is sad because i i know why they probably seen a loss in 2020 i mean this is a studio that's not really doing very interesting stuff i mean i think last year it was imma pretty derby two um i think seven seeds came out on netflix at some point last year i forget but I mean, they're just doing, they're doing, I guess they're doing stuff that really kind of is put on them as kind of, they're like those typical advertising anime. Like they're not anime that are interesting or original. It's just like, you know, because somebody needed this made, they got paid to do it. And then they didn't see much profit out of it, which that's the sad thing. It's like, you know, I love Muzume Pretty Derby, but I wasn't really interested in season two at all because it was being done by Studio Kai and not. PA works. Seven Seeds, The Prince of Tennis, um, which I guess technically has its its following. Cag- uh, Cagister of the Insect Cage. <laughs> and again, these are a lot of titles that are technically stuck on Netflix. So it's like, I it, it, it sucks because they're not doing things that I think are really that interesting. If Super Cub was the first time that they really became interested in me because I really do like Super Cub and I think it's a very interesting idea and concept and the directing on it's been fantastic. So it's like, I hope I hope Super Cub is successful because I want them to know that this stuff is good. <laughs> Whereas the other stuff didn't really catch my attention at all. Now, I will say, yeah, I watched a couple episodes of Pretty Derby Season 2. The rest of the stuff, and mostly it's because of Netflix aspects, I haven't watched. And like I said, I think that Seven Seeds and all those are really a problem of them being stuck on Netflix and not getting eyeballs on them. So, But that's from a Western point of view. I don't know how, well, uh, how that's different in Japan. So... It's sad because I don't want them to mess up after getting Super Cub, which I really mm-hmm. like. <laughs> Go watch Super Cub. It, you should watch it. It's cute. It's great. Again, if you watch Layback Camp and love that, you should watch Super Cub. That's that's definitely my my easiest uh, comparison. There is is Layback Camp. So, yep. Moving on, we have Netflix has announced that uh, here here's our here's our whole just stuck on Netflix example. <laughs> Godzilla Singular Point is finally going to be premiering outside of Japan on June 24th, so uh, we've been waiting for a while. This is one of the ones I've been looking forward to, but again, being stuck on Netflix doesn't help us be able to watch it. Um, But this is the one that's being done by Bones and Orange, so hopefully it'll be a pretty solid uh, take on Godzilla. (laughs) But yeah, I'll be definitely checking that one out. It ran for 13 episodes, apparently, and... um, Yep, yeah, follows a young genius, May, a female researcher, and uh, Yun, a male engineer, as they take on the up- unprecedented threat with their company, or companions, company, <laughs> the companions. And that would probably be God- Godzilla, a Godzilla show. So It's one of those that I'm kind of interested in it, uh, in checking out, but I, I, I don't know. It's, 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 it's moderately interested type thing. Yeah, I keep, I keep checking out all the the interesting, at least anime related Godzilla stuff that comes out there. And I always enjoy them to extent. So 
especially that last, uh, I think it was Polygon picture that did that Godzilla three films. I really did enjoy that one. So besides the last movie, <laughs> the last movie was like, meh. <laughs> Last movie was not that good, but the the other the the, the first two are really good. I did enjoy them. It's it's kind of like Ni- my Nicedonia meets Godzilla, which was really cool. So, and you can kind of give that partly due to the fact that it's connected to, you know, the studio. So, well, it's it's one of those that's um, embedded in uh, our cultural fandom. So it's 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 almost like it's necessary. Uh, to a point to at least have a awareness of it. Does that make sense? Awareness of Godzilla? Yeah, because it is a part of our uh, our fandom's culture in a way. Yeah. Just yeah. like the uh, Tokatsu or what? How do, how do you say his name? Common Rider, stuff like that. Mm. Gotcha. So it, it, it's necessary to know, have an at least an awareness. You, not necessarily that you have to go full bore into it and incorporate it but it's it it's nice to have that cultural awareness because it is all a part of the uh japanese culture and to have that awareness because it will be referenced in a lot of your anime and that was the thing with godzilla it's always been like this like the ultimate prime example of underdog i've always, i've actually really enjoyed stories like that i mean i'll know zero captured me in the very beginning because of that aspect this idea of the human race being up against something that is literally impossible and that's always something interesting to me godzilla literally is a beacon of impossibility you can't you just can't go up there and shoot it <laughs> it's <laughs> not so you have to find some way around it and granted typically sometimes with a lot of these movies and stuff it's always like a really dumb idea that kind of takes it on but I mean, that was the whole idea behind the um, the Polygon Pictures movies of Godzilla was like this idea of this absolute absurdity they had to go through, sur- absurd levels they had to go through in order to take him down. And even still, it doesn't take him down. <laughs> like they literally melt and freeze him just to try to kill him. And he's still breathing. It's just, again, that that immovable object that you just cannot take down, which is always makes it interesting. So. I'll be curious how they handle it in this particular one. But, um, yeah. Looking forward to that on June 24th. There's going to be a lot of things happening around then. Because then we have um, Wonder Egg Priority. Their their finale is going to be around that time. I think the 29th of June. Uh, of course, the season's going to be ending. <laughs> I'm going to be really busy at the end of June. It's going to be really nuts. But, um, fun stuff, though. It's, it's always good to have too much stuff to do. Sometimes. <laughs> Uh, sad news for Mushoko Tensai, Jobless and Reincarnation fans. Um, they have announced on their website that they are planning on continuing the series in October. Um, previously, it was reported to be in July, so we will not be seeing that in the summer season. We'll be seeing it in the fall season. So, Sad news, but at the same time, it's one of those things where, hey, if, it, if it's going to cause issues with production, definitely delay. <laughs> they just put that it was various circumstances that they delayed it, but... There you go. Unfortunate, but we will wait. We will wait. It will hopefully be around when it comes around. Uh, apparently, Crunchyroll and Sentai Filmworks are still working together. That's a good. That's a good thing to know. <laughs> I think we talked about this quite a while back about like whatever happened to the partnership they had that they were going to be doing releases together. But apparently, that's still list, uh, going on. So uh, they announced home video releases as part of their partnership, including Noble S, uh, Onyx, Equinox. Uh, Haiku to the top, I'm Standing on a Million Lives, Keep Your Hands Off Izoken, Monster Gold Doctor, My Next Life is a Villainous, All Routes re- Lead to Doom, uh, Rent a Girlfriend, Science Fell in Love, So I Try to Prove It, Somali and the Forest Spirit, and Welcome to Demon School, Irmakun. Well, I'll be getting, I'll be wow. getting this. Yeah, Irmakun was probably the biggest surprise out of all those ones, but I think it's one of those ones where you don't realize technically how popular it is. I just think it's just certain groups don't really talk about it. But I think it probably has a really solid, I mean, like the same, again, this is nothing against people that like Iramakun or people that like Naruto, but I think it kind of falls in that same category as I think more younger audiences probably would really kind of gravitate toward, towards it after watching Naruto. Maybe. Maybe. It's, 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 got, a, it's, it's got a very it's a kind of, show. yeah, it's got a very younger style to it, I guess. Shonen style to it. But yeah, and uh I think Welcome to School, Air McCoon. Somali is nice to see that that got a release as well. Um, Next Life as a Villainous is, is good to see that that got a release. 
I'm sure Izuku will be very successful, hopefully. We'll see if people can put their money where their excitement was. Everybody was blowing up about Izuku, and let's see if they'll actually buy it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, to the top, Q, of course, is probably a good thing for them to do a release on. The rest of it's kind of like, meh. Where's Shogun Roku Raku Shinju, huh? <laughs> That's all it comes down to is why, why is Shogun Roku not in that list? <laughs> Please, come on. Amazon probably still owns it. It's not Amazon. It's never been Amazon. You keep saying, like, every time we talk about a show, you think it's an Amazon. It's not an Amazon. It's on Crunchyroll. But, yeah, I think all the Amazon stuff, Sentai Filmworks, is pretty much picked up. We'll talk about it in a little bit, but technically they, they announced they got Vinland Saga, which I think is technically the last one that was stuck on there. I mean, you technically have uh, Dropkick on My Devil still on there, I believe. But um, I think that's pretty much all of them. They got the do 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 So... I think they've pretty much picked up all of Amazon stuff. Wait, okay. I don't I don't think they ever did a physical release of Oni Hey. I know Crunchyroll picked it up to stream it, but I don't think anybody got Oni Hey for a physical release. <laughs> no, I think they did cuz no, it was Crunchyroll and they they were streaming it and they had the OVAs. Yeah. There you go. Oh, yeah, that is the next piece of news. <laughs> they got they got Villain Saga. That's my next piece of news. So there you go. <laughs> Apparently, that's that's the thing. I, I'm curious if they will ever get a sequel of Inland Saga, because that was technically the... the Vinland Saga, the animated series, was the, like, technically prologue of the story. And it kind of, like, at the very end goes, you know, this is a prologue. Here's the actual story. And it's like, well, are we adapting that? <laughs> or is this just a big, huge manga bait? But, yeah, we'll, we'll see. It's been, shoot, that's been probably two years now. Seems like it's been that a while. Definitely doesn't look good for it getting a sequel. But hey, we've been getting a lot of stuff getting sequels lately that were surprising. But Layback Camp. For fans of Layback Camp, the website has revealed that the final Blu ray disc for season two will contain an OVA. This OVA will be titled Traveling Rin Shima. So look forward to that. If you're a fan, I'm hoping and I'm assuming that Crunchyroll will probably get that OVA. They've been pretty good about getting OVAs of popular titles. So. It's only a matter of time. We can watch that. For fans of the Magnificent Kotobuki, the compilation film has been picked up by Sentai Filmworks, and they will be doing a Western release of it, including United States, Canada, uh, UK, Ireland, Australia, New Zealand, Netherlands, Denmark, Norway, Sweden, Spain, Portugal, Central America, and South America. (laughs) I guess there's more in there that's not West, but there you go. Good stuff. I... I was enjoying the Kotobukiya, or Kotobukiya, <laughs> the magnificent Kotobuki. <laughs> I think it. I think it had a good style to it. I just. I. I think I got there was too much stuff that season, so I never finished it. But it was it had a lot of potential there. So, good on them. Good on them. Good stuff. Uh, some pretty cool news. Um, Katakawa's Gundam Ace magazine has teased that a new manga will be uh be in print based on Gundam 0080 War in the Pocket's Chris McKenzie. So the female pilot of the series will apparently be getting her own manga. I'm curious if it'll be... um, when that will be within the story. I'm I'm, I'm, I'm trying to be very vague to not spoil things, but I'm curious at what point that will take place. I mean, the obvious option is, of course, the prequel story, but I'm really curious in when there... Because she technically was... She was predominant in the story, but not as much as the the young boy and the um, the other pilot. So there's technically a lot of room for her to have a story within the story of War in the Pocket. But I'm curious, at, you know, technically where exactly that'll place the story. Yeah, her um, her the the entire thing behind her was was a fascinating aspect of that story, which kind of was the for lack of a better term, the the climax uh, in a in a in a way because it it her reveal and you you kind of knew she was but it wasn't flat out said until towards what in the middle yeah that probably that two thirds the way through yeah it, it, I mean it was a latter reveal towards the uh, in the story but it, yeah her 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 entire thing was a fascinating aspect of that which gave a lot of the um, drama points that were necessary to kind of make it 
and we, it's it's a great story in general. So it's having, a Romeo having, and Juliet story. Yeah. Just say it. <laughs> it's technically Romeo and Juliet. <laughs> Two loves that were meant to be star-crossed lovers. Yeah, yeah. There you go. Cool stuff, though. Uh, apparently, the manga is going to be launching on June 26th. So another thing coming in late June. <laughs> Everything's late June. <laughs> Uh, but I'm sure, I, I'm sure that will get picked up pretty quickly to come over here too. So cool, cool, cool. Crunchyroll has announced that their virtual Crunchyroll Expo event will be hosting the following bands between August 5th and 7th. Of course, this will be a virtual event, uh, because obviously everybody is still trying to keep away from each other. So, <laughs> uh, this includes Burnout Syndrome, which is really surprised there. That's really awesome. Uh, 7 Billion Dots, Magic of Life, and Rhythmic Toy World. So, cool stuff. Definitely, definitely looking forward to that one. They have already, they also have a lot of other interesting things coming up with that one. So, I'm sure it'll be a really awesome expo. Looking forward to it. Cool stuff. Cool stuff. Cool stuff. Cool stuff. Uh, Aoi, Aoashi manga is to get an anime TV series to premiere in spring 2022. So, Yay always liked getting, you know, knowledge of something that's literally a year out and which will probably be delayed even still. Uh, the manga centers around a third year high, uh, third year middle school student, uh, Ashi, Ashito Aoi, uh, who lives in Ahime Prefecture. Ashito has a strong talent for soccer, but he tries to hide it due to his very stri- straightforward personality. He causes a disaster that serves as a huge setback for him. Then... Tatsuya, a veteran and strong J-Club team, Tokyo City, Asperion, and coach of the club of club's youth team, appears in front of Ashito. Tatsuya sees through Ashito and sees his talent and invites him to try out for the youth team in Tokyo. Yeah. I don't want to play soccer. Guy comes along, says you're playing soccer. They play soccer. <laughs> <laughs> Looking forward to it. Man, spring, I hate that we're looking forward to a year. I always hate that. Uh, in our section of news of things not to do, police from Tokyo uh, Musashino Station reported that they have arrested a 25-year-old woman and charged for forcibly obstructing of business. Uh, the reports say that uh, she sent threatening emails to Wit Studio claiming that she was going to set the studio on fire. And, of course... We're only about two years out from the, the uh, Kyoto Animation incident, arson, arsony, but that's not really something you should do right now. <laughs> Is she, they say why? She just, no. Because? They just said what the email said, and I'm sure they'll probably do investigations and find out that she's crazy. And Well, I'm sure she's crazy, but... Unfortunately, probably not doing Usually, anything. there's a reason why they do something, not necessarily <sighs> just probably because... Probably because they didn't do Attack on Titan. They didn't do Attack Because they didn't do the last season of Attack on there Titan. <laughs> That's I, all the reason. <laughs> didn't continue Coven area of the Iron I coaches. wouldn't doubt that that was probably <laughs> the reason, unfortunately. It's something probably really stupid. Something really stupid for somebody that's crazy to do. Mm-hmm. Ah, people. Bandai Namco Group has announced the Mobile Suit Gundam Seed Project Ignited initiative during its ceremony for the life-size Freedom Gundam statue in Shanghai. Uh, They confirmed production of the film project that serves as a sequel to the TV series. So apparently Gundam Seed is going to get a sequel film. And uh, they also announced a Mobile Suit Gundam Seed game, as well as Seed Eclipse side story manga. So fans of Seed, there's more stuff to come. Exciting, exciting. Did we we watch that one? Yeah, we watched that one, right? Maybe not. I don't remember. I don't remember. We watched so many Gundams, I don't remember what we've watched. (laughs) <laughs> I want to say we did. I mean, it was one of the ones that we didn't get. I think so. I don't know. I'll have to look at the shelf later. But yeah. Uh, Sentai Filmworks has announced that they have licensed uh, Nozo X Kimi OVA. So for fans of that one, look forward to uh, a physical release of that one in US, Canada, UK, Ireland. The same ones I said earlier. <laughs> uh, the story says uh, Kimio Suga didn't intend anything uh, untoward, but a cascading series of unlucky events leaves him hiding in a gym locker as his female classmates return from PA class. Luckily, he found he's found by Nozomi Komune, 
a shy classmate who covers for Kimio despite his incriminating predicament. Uh, but Nozomi isn't a demure as isn't as demure as she seems, uh, because shortly after saving Kimio, she blackmails him into a series of clandestine and promise uh, com- compromising scenarios. So yeah, I mean, if, if you can guess, it's an edgy show. So. <laughs> Penguin Drum compilation film project has ended successfully, earning 105 million yen. Uh, the original goal was for only 10 million yen, so thus c- <laughs> confirming that either everybody loves Penguin Drum, or if Ikuhara even made a crown funding for kicking a can down the street, I'm sure people would spend a fortune on him. <laughs> I think people love Ikuhara a little bit too much, but that's cool. I'm not saying that that's not a great thing. Um, that's literally almost a million USD. That's crazy, but um, yeah, I am. I kind of wonder uh, what all they'll end up doing with this one. Um, if it's gonna be, of course, it's gonna be a compilation film. I'm sure they'll probably do some kind of edits to it. I'm sure you don't need a hundred million yen just to shove it all into a movie, um, which means they'll probably re maybe animate some stuff and move some stuff around. So I'm kind of wondering if I should wait for this to watch it because I do have the TV series. But I don't know. That's cool, though. I'm sure fans of Penguin Drum are excited for that. Definitely a huge success. Uh, let's see here. Might Setsu Manga has, is ending with its second volume on June 23rd. So that's another one of those kind of unfortunate things where you wonder if it wasn't successful in the animation, so they decided to kind of drop it. Usually whenever you hear a manga ends right after an animated adaptation of it ends, <laughs> it's usually a bad sign. I think we had that with, like... Uh, the Keijo show and stuff, even though they want to claim it was nothing to do with it. It's kind of makes you wonder. And I, I still kind of want to check out the manga for that, because my whole point in that whole thing was like, it's not funny, but I think that was the purpose of it, it's not to be funny, because they had to learn how to do a good, a better job. But at the same time, that makes it kind of boring. Yeah. So, I don't know. It's interesting. Another one that's ending is Candy and Cigarettes. Apparently, it's ending in two chapters, so... If you are checking out that one, keep an eye out for that ending. Uh, Sells at work, Code Black story writer Shige Shige Mitsu Harada and Taboo Tattoos mangaka Shinjiro is to launch a new manga. Uh, Apparently it's called Shinyaku Kanai Kosen, or the Crab Canary uh, Ship New Testament. Uh, apparently a modern take on the this will be this manga will be a modern take on Kani Kosen's uh, which was debuted back in 20, uh, 1929 and was banned by Imperial Japanese government the book tells a story about a struggling crab boat worker whose labor is exploited so exploited some interesting news visual arts and key has announced that looper's uh, kinetic uh, novel will be getting an overseas release of course this being kinetic means that it's just a linear story there's no choices uh they also announced a smartphone version is in the works uh the story is let out uh let's set out and find a real treasure tyler is a high school student who is obsessed with uh geocaching a gps based treasure hunting game Uh, one day during a summer vacation tyler and his friends get drawn into a mysterious incident without uh what with while out treasure hunting the real and imaginary become interconnected um, thoughts are thrown into chaos. Tomorrow becomes today. Sounds a little weird. Apparently time jumping, maybe? <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like it. Uh, but cool stuff, though. More key and visual art stuff coming over to the West, which is always a good thing. So it's a, a, a kinetic mo- novel is a like a visual novel, but... No choices. But no choices. Huh. Yeah. So just literally, literally a novel. <laughs> it's literally a novel. It's just done on the computer cool uh let's see here my anime list has announced that uh the following companies agatsuki inc the anime times company inc dmm.com llc and kotakawa corporation have all collectively underwritten 311 million yen of my anime list's stock um they the my anime list seeks to invest the funds in it to accelerate expansion of its platform focused on accessibility uh, including multi-language support promote information exchange, increase server robustness, advance interconnected be- uh, interconnection between fans and businesses, and improve their iOS and Android app 
uh, functions, including social and um, other features. So, yeah, interesting. Good. Isn't that like the Bad. third third company that's tried to invest in my, uh, my anime list? Well, previously D E N A had bought them, and then I'm guessing they open up stocks, and now this these companies have collectively bought into it. So, hmm. yeah, it's it's one of those things where you see the functionality of my anime list and the popularity of it, and so it's kind of hard for any kind of anime studio or any any anime company to really ignore. But at the same time, it's like you never. It's like, well, so many companies seem to be investing into Miami List, it never sees any kind of improvement. It's like, the only thing I think I've seen change within the last few years has been now they put Crunchyroll links or video thumbnails inside the video that don't even work technically. And, you know, links to Amazon to buy certain manga and stuff that sometimes don't even work. And so it's like, I hope this time they actually do something to make it better. Like, yeah, I, I could definitely see the benefit to them having reference links or not reference links, but um, affiliate links in their site. It's literally free money. And if somebody's checking out a manga and they can see a link to Amazon to buy it from, you know, Kadansha or Seven Seas or something, that seems logical. But at the same time, if it doesn't work, there's no point to it. Plus, you also have other functionality that really needs to be improved that can both help stabilize your servers and take down load. Like an app is the easiest way that you can both increase the actual eyeballs on your site while also decreasing the load on your site. Because if you can make it nice and streamlined, smaller, um, running on a phone, it pulls less data than you would having somebody have to go to a website and browse to the actual site to see everything that's on the website itself it, it it is it is one of those things it's kind of you know in a way it's sad um to see kind of the evolution if you want to call it that of uh my anime list knowing that it's been there it's an artifact of our fandom that has been kicked around as something that needs to be done but nobody really wants to do anything with it and the, and, and and that's what's what what is kind of frustrating is to know that I can sit here and look at uh, my anime list and Anime Planet. And Anime Planet is... I'm not saying that it's anywhere near um, the level of my anime li list, but at least it looks like it's um, evolving. Where my anime list, it's literally the same. It looks, to me, the same as it did when I first looked at it. Well, that's the thing. Is like I, I like how my anime list structures its pages better. Like it's laid out a lot better than Anime Planet. But at the same time, I'm wondering if, and you could probably look into it, but it seems like at some point people stopped working to update My Amulus. And I don't know if it's because My Amulus put more stricter, like, restrictions on people to submit data. Because that's what it seems like. It seems like at some point My Amulus made it much more difficult for people to submit data to it. Because whenever I go to make our outlines, even when it's time to review, I go to my anime list to see if I can grab images and data to put into the outline, and it's not updated. It literally has like maybe two character profiles in there, and everything else is blank. They might have the voice actor updated, but no imagery, no no s summaries or anything like that. And so I have to go to Anime Planet just to get that information, and then come back to. You. So I, I get all of my you know sources on you know who made it. Uh, the studio, the the link, all that kind of information is there and easier to see on my Amulus. But when it comes to getting individual character profiles and stuff, I have to go to my uh, Anime Planet because none of it's updated on my Amulus. So like I said, I wonder how much of it is just there's so much restrictions on who can put information on there. Maybe it's just imagery and stuff like that. But it, it does seem, and it does seem like they're technically talking about information about inc improving data exchange. Um yeah, they say promote information exchange. I'm assuming that's what that is. But they have to do something because it seems like for the last maybe it was probably about the time that DNA bought them out, it seems like, because that was about five years ago. Um, maybe that was about the point in which it started. I started seeing that. So it would make sense. It just seems like there's some real 
again, I don't know exactly what it is, but it seems like there's some kind of restrictions preventing it. I mean, it, it would be nice to kind of just pay somebody to do that. I'm, I'm sure they probably do, but somebody could easily... Like, I, I, I thought about that at some point a while back. I'm like, I wonder if they would actually pay somebody to just go through and update all that information. Because that is that is a cool thing. That that database is a cool thing. Mm -hmm. But what happens when a show has been, you know, was aired four years ago and never updated to have all of its information in there? And then four years later, it just gets forgotten. And then somebody goes back and looks in there, that database, and the database is just, it's useless at that point because it was never updated. So the, the strength of the database is in its completion yeah the, the the frustrating thing is it 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 relies heavily on the fandom to keep it up it's like a it's like it, it's effectively a, a wikipedia you can't trust for, free labor sometimes yeah, <laughs> you, you can't. It, and because you, you, no, there's nobody who's literally they're gonna keep, they're gonna keep reading my, every manga yeah every watching every anime every season i mean we have a hard time keeping up with just the anime alone can you imagine keeping up with all the anime all the sh all the manga um and then any artifacts outside of that that you have to keep up with like the music industry the um the the voice actors and the extra stuff that all of them are doing yeah it's it's, it's funny because like if you were to go to uh um something like my hero academia no doubt you're gonna have every single character naruto you're going to have every single character. <laughs> Dragon Ball Z, every single character will be in that Miami list page. There, there's no doubt that there's not going to be a completion there. And that's crazy to think because of how much stuff is in there. But if I were to go to, say, Claymore, the manga, which has an insanely huge cast, I do not doubt that you're probably... Well, actually, they did a pretty good job on this one. <laughs> there is actually most all of them. Cause there's a there's a lot of claymores, a lot of uh, of the um, what are they call claymores. It's been so long since I've watched it, but yeah, claymores. So it's just like it's it's a pick and choose kind of thing, and a lot of it's around popularity. And so a lot of things that aren't going to be popular are probably not going to get as well covered. So that's the unfortunate thing. Because I like I said, I I think there is a value to something being completed. It's just then, hard to expect it all to be completed. And then the to take into consideration the the Sakuga uh, people who who absolutely watch like hawks when when animation changes in mid mid show and they they're the ones who are actually saying um this this episode was uh directed and and has key animation from these people right here and it's like i would have never caught it but they, well, a lot of those people are following like every single producer and, mm -hmm. and director and they're watching their Twitter feeds where they announce they're working on a specific scene and they jump on it like hawks and it's yeah. like I kind of at some point had an itching to do that, but it's like that's a whole rabbit hole I yeah. don't have time for. Like I love the idea of pointing out when a director comes in and that's like uh, here a recent example was um, I think it was like episode 96 or something of My Hero Academia had this scene where Engine Boy is just going crazy nuts forget his name because i hate him <laughs> i'm sorry <laughs> engine leg boy goes nuts you know darting through his area and you can obviously tell this looks a little different than normal like the styling and everything and the veracity and the speed of it is different than the rest of the animation it's obviously somebody else worked on that particular scene to maximize the intensity and veracity of what he's doing so yeah, it's always interesting, but at the same time, it's like that's a rabbit hole that in time that I just don't have. I yeah. have I have these focuses for my time, and if I add this to it, I'm probably have to knock out half of what I do because that's how much time and effort takes in that stuff. Which I give full credit to the soccer gut community and what they develop with that. But yeah, yeah, it is. I'll, I'll it leave, is. I'll it is. It is fun to just go to the soccer gut community and just look at what they they find. They they find some of the most gorgeous stuff. Yeah. Yeah. But no, I'm not going down that road either. <laughs> that's that's a road I can't go down. It's an investment, definitely an yeah. investment. So no, good luck to them. Hopefully, this money gets put to some solid use. But um, I don't expect it just because I've <laughs> I haven't seen them to improve anything for a long time. But uh, yeah, well, we have a ton. For some reason, the last few weeks have been like let's announce like everything we license for the next three years for all these companies. So if anything jumps out at you, Chris, you're welcome to speak up if you want to know more about them. But Kodansha Comics has licensed Police in a Pod. Ya boy Kong, Kong Ming, 
Undead Girl Murders Farce, uh, Saint Cecilia and Pastor Lawrence, Quality Assurance in Another World. Seven Seas has announced Arrow. Uh, what about the Undead Girl? Undead Girl, Undead Girl Murder Farce. Undead Girl Murder Farce. The end of the 19th century, a vampire wife is murdered. A detective known as Cage User is called in to solve the crime. But there's more detective than and a curtain and the curtain bird cage he carries. It's got a head in it, obviously. <laughs> we see it from the cover. After all, when solving a case involving a monster, it might just take one to no one. So apparently the detective carries around a head to solve murder mysteries. Probably the murder or the, the vampire girl. Um it's no, it says a vampire wife is murdered. And a detective known as Cage User is called in to solve the crime. Hmm. And he has a head inside of his cage to solve the murder. But I guess he technically could have gone in there and got the murdered head's wife head and then put it in the cage and then was called in to, to solve the case. That could or, be. Or, or that the, the, the head in the cage is the undead girl. That might be it. Well, that's also interesting, the idea of somebody solving a case for a vampire like, is, is a vampire okay to exist, so he's come in to help this vampire, or does he not know that it is a vampire and that he's solving a case for his murdered wife? Yeah. No, the vampire's wife, if, if it's is like in the, you said it, 19th century? Mm-hmm. So that's the 1800s, so more than likely the, the vampire's wife, the vampire's male, so. What is, what, what is, it, what? Why are you bringing up his gender? What? <laughs> well, it's the vampire's wife. Right. So what I'm saying is a vampire's wife was murdered. Mm -hmm. So the so, vampire is male. That's not what I'm asking what well, his gender is. What I'm saying is, oh, is well, it I guess okay the vampire's for... wife could be the head. That's that's where we were going originally. I, I'm sorry. No, I've left that whole story behind because I was joking about that. <laughs> My question is, the detective is hired to come find out how the wife was murdered so that is that assuming that he is going there knowing this is a vampire and that vampires in this world are okay right because it seems like he has a monster in his cage obviously mm -hmm. so he's like oh hey what's up vampire friend how's it going let me solve this case of your murdered wife oh she has a stake through her chest man that must have been one of those nasty belmont guys obviously <laughs> uh anyways that was confusing um yeah Good stuff, good stuff. Moving on, we have Seven Seas is licensed Aero Ninja Scroll Manga, Planet of the Orcs Light Novel, Reincarnated as a Sword, Another Wish Manga, My Next Life as a Villain is Side Story on the Verge of Doom Manga, Cat Massage Therapy Manga, Restart After Coming Back Home Manga, Restart After Growing Hungry Manga, <laughs> Robo Sapiens Tale of Tomorrow Manga, the Case File of Jeweler Richard Manga, Seaside Stranger Harukaze no Entranger, Etranger, I guess. I might have misspelled that. The Country Without Humans, Reborn as a Marrier Master, No Matter What You Say, Fury San is Scary, uh, or is that Furry? Maybe Fury San. Fury San, probably Fury San. Uh, the, Echo, the Exo Dive Reincarnation Games. My Lovey Dovey Wife is a Stone Cold Killer manga. Uh, Semel, Semel Paris, I think. The Savior's Book Cafe Story in Another World. Magai, Magai Mono Super Magic Action Entertainment. Uh, Succubus and Hitman manga. Fuka Fuka Dungeon Kyo, Kyoryakuki manga. Double your, pal <laughs> Double your pleasure, manga. I am a cat barista, the Dragon's Knight's beloved, the walking cat, and shy with strangers, manga. Obviously, <sighs> succubus and hitman. Succubus and hitman. Did I say succubus and hitman? Okay, I did. <laughs> Just don't, it all blurred together when I was reading it. Uh, it's probably not going to be as interesting as you think it is. You know that, right? Probably not. Uh, maybe it might be. The, the art style is interesting. <laughs> Gamo Shoya is a dead man. At least he was Gamo Shoya's inside his... He was Gamo. Inside his body resides the soul of someone else. Okay, murdered, but uh, murdered, but brought back to life in his body. 
now a student living a life not that's not his own, Shoya is haunted by a melon, Armelian, Armelian, Ar Armelina, Armelina, a beautiful demon succubus who was has given him a new role, Hitman. Uh, she can't kill humans directly, but she can use Shoya to hunt and kill the wicked who prowl the streets, leaving their departing souls ripe for Armelina to devour. In exchange, she'll help him hunt down whoever killed him in the first place. It's a dark path for Shoya. The only thing that has, uh, he has left to lose is his soul. So he's being used by the succubus. Ah. It's all right, I guess. It seems a little bit weak on the storyline. Oh, for sure. For sure. Definitely, I agree. But fan service galore, <laughs> I guarantee it. Well, she has, like, cat ears. I don't know if succubuses have cat ears. That's interesting. Cat-eared succubus. Not going to not gonna argue with it or anything like that. Mm-hmm. Uh, quickly, Yun Press has gotten the hero last while walking the path of vengeance, a second time manga. Let this grieving soul retire manga. Nana, nama ika, iki, nama iki, uh, zakari manga. I've been an Omega since today manga. The splendid work of a monster made manga. Blood Magi Madoka Magica Wraith Arc manga. Magical Explorer light novel. Cross-dressing villainous Cecilia Sylvie uh, light novel. The girl I saved on the train turned out to be my childhood friend light novel. And Rust Eater Bisco light novel. So yeah, that's all the news that seems to be important to us that should be important to you because it's important to us. We have some time. We actually have some time left to actually dive into our community and answer some questions from our great community members. Uh, if, as usual, if you do want to do it as well, you can go to atakaspirit.com. At the top, there's a contact us button. You can just email andrew at com, or you can go to the forums at atakaspirit.com, sign up there, and post your question there under the anime cast question thread. Like uh, Lane has write, written in. I think this is when we talked about they wrote in two letters, but uh, we got their first question back on the uh, mailbag question uh, podcast that we did last week, but... Yeah, Lane says, I'm a huge fan of Fairy Tale and was delighted to find that when I found your fairy cast, it's so great compared to some other fairy cast or fairy tale podcasts. I like the one that you do the most because it's not so focused on the negative as of the series. As a huge fan, I enjoyed a lot. Since I am not done with watching the series, I haven't listened to all your episodes about it yet. So I don't when you're plan know when you're planning on continuing the fairy cast. Maybe you said you wouldn't in one of the later episodes. If that's the case, I'm sorry. I haven't gotten there. Um, I haven't gotten there yet. But if you are, or you've forgotten, or something else, I just wanted to ask if you're going to move on. Uh, like I said, I really enjoy hearing you guys talk about it. You guys have made me laugh so hard. Thank you for your time, and hope to hear from you soon. Uh, from Lane, P.S. Uh, even though it's a while back, when you said that there was that one guy who was mm-hmm. so annoying and terrible, I knew right away you were talking about Ichio. Just thought I'd add that. Man, man, I actually really <laughs> like him now. That's what the weird thing is. I think I have like Stockholm syndrome from Ichio, so I'm like, now I like him and I want to support him. Um, but they always seem to have somebody come in and pl- in his place to be more annoying, and then it's like, okay, now I like Ichio because this guy's more annoying. <laughs> But no, we're continuing it. I think I mentioned our last uh, mailbag question. We were talking about how I have technically Faircast 12 recorded. I just haven't edited it yet. I think what I plan on doing is once I finish Emma and I get my review done for that, because that's probably going to take a lot of my free time currently, I will probably work to get caught up on the current season, which I'm currently caught up on. It's just going to take me having to get re-caught up, and then I'll probably work on editing that and getting posted, and then we can start working on watching... Fairy Tale Zero, which is going to be our next step for that. So, Yuki apparently agrees. She's just tired of everything. She's like, I just won't want to be stuck in here. Listen to you guys talk about anime. So, yeah, excited to jump back into Fairy Tale. Yes, actually, I am. I was going to hey, get one of my favorite. <laughs> one of my favorite sections is is coming up. So, well, that was the thing. Is like I, I as much as I, I think if I had just watched Fairy Tale alone, to be honest, I don't think I would enjoy it as much. Is I think it's more enjoyable the fact that me and Chris get to watch together and that we get to talk about it and kind of put out the absurdity of the series, which is always fun. So I'm glad that, that kind of comes across in the podcast itself, that enjoyment of it and the kind of positivity. Because yeah, I mean to be perfectly honest, there is negative aspects of it, but nobody cares about that. <laughs> Everybody else has covered all that. Yeah. 
it's still it's you, you get to focus on the positive stuff so yeah looking forward to that sorry for the wait but it's still coming um we, we've not given up on it that is we we technically created a shonen initiative at some point which we would be taking turns choosing shows and fairy tale was our first one we've had a lot of fun with it it's it's one of those ones where we gotten i think most of the feedback we've gotten on it has always been positive and that's enough for us to have that there's a group of people that really enjoy it is what we do it for even if it's not the biggest <laughs> uh but yeah I think we I think we've decided that Gintama will be next. So if you if you're looking for the next show that you have to watch with us, be prepared. <laughs> uh, next one we have is Otaku Usama. Uh, writes in and says, "Hey, how's it going? I just wanted to see if you uh, see if you've seen that Myth and Royd uh, and Mihoyo are getting together for the third anniversary of Honkai Impact. I uh, thought that was pretty cool and wanted to share because I know you guys like them, are fans of them. I have not heard of that. I don't really have any interest in Honkai Impact, so I'm just gonna hope that it spills over to <laughs> Genshin Impact. I, I I did know about it uh, mostly on the aspect of like everybody I'm following or I'm I'm at least aware of is going nuts about it. So it's but I'm not going to go to Honkai Impact just for that. Even though I would love to get into Honkai Impact, I've got enough time. That has been uh, sucked away with Genshin Impact. So another game is that would suck my time away is not not going to happen. So is Myth and Roy going to be a character inside of of Honkai Impact, or she's doing music for it, or just Probably. something for the event? Probably uh, music in an event because um, the way it, it, it's stru- it seems to be structured very similar to Genshin Impact, as far as I can tell. What do you mean structured? I thought it was like mission based in different areas, not technically an open world. If it's not open world, that's that that would make sense to me. But it looks it looks almost to a T. The only difference is it seems to be futuristic instead of kind of uh, Breath of the Wild ish, if you want to call it that. Oh, well, that, that was a thing that really. I mean, I it was technically like a a gameplay and visual marvel for a mobile game when it first came out like it literally how it played how fast it played and yeah the anime style to it but all that stuff grouped up with the really fast paced action RPG elements was what technically brought a lot of um, fame back when it was first came out it's just it was one of those things where I just wasn't interested in, in a, another action RPG I wasn't interested in playing that on my actual device I'm looking at this brilliant bright myth and roy thing it just looks like a music video with them dancing to it yeah it looks like one of those stupid billy billy things that everybody that keeps popping up on my list i don't know i figured it was going to be a official thing but anyways apparently she did some music for it so <laughs> uh, takasama says also if either of you uh were to god forbid go outside to the store so you can get a drink of some kind and out of nowhere a bus comes along and crashes into you and you die which isekai anime series would you want to wake up in and why? Now, 300 years is uh, Killing Slimes. Yeah, I think that one's like the least <laughs> dangerous out of all of them. Like, because that was the, that's the joke that always comes up is like, yeah, I like Rim, but I don't want to go to ReZero World. Or, yeah, that's not, no. Uh, <laughs> I don't want to go to Sword Art Online World, even if I like the characters there. It's like, go to the safest one with the best possibilities. And I think that's technically right now slimes, 300 year slimes. Um, I mean, I, I, even with something like reincarnated as a slime, that still seems kind of dangerous too, because there's threats there. It's just that he's overpowered. So he's able to overcome it. But yeah, I don't know. Maybe, maybe, maybe reincarnated as a slime. It seems, it seems safe enough. It, it just depends on what I get. If I get overpowered abilities, I think slime, uh, reincarnated as a slime is a, is a good choice. But most of the other ones is just there's too much threats, <laughs> danger and and lack of civilization that you can that you can work with. Because I I think most of, that's like the whole concept of reincarnated as a slime is like we need plumbing. I miss plumbing. <laughs> well, you, could go to the, you could go to the the fly, the slime rancher kid. He he had a pretty peaceful life as well. Slime rancher kid. Oh, God's God's the, bless this. No, what what was it called? It was something like. Uh, 
Is it God's blessed this wonderful world? Or no, that's no. am I thinking of Kanasuba? It was something like uh anyway, I don't remember. It was something like God's blessing or something like that. But yeah, I'd probably say slimes. Recon is a slime. Seems seems safe enough. <laughs> But maybe 300 years is I'm better. going to 300, 300, 300 years. 300 years has well. this threat, too. It's just that she's overpowered, so she's able to overcome it. So, I don't know. It seems more bubbly just because she's able to survive it. And she's pretty much invincible, and she never grows old. So, yeah. Let's, if, let's, if, 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 it, if it definitely fall within the same guy lens, it definitely seems like the best option. So, yeah. Uh, Okotaka Sama says, and I have been listening to the two of you for the past three or four years now. I'm sorry that you have to deal with for that long. And I feel like I can say for that the long time listener, we just listen to you, listen to you, just listen to you to listen to you talk. <laughs> Both of you guys are going back and forth, whether it's banter or gushing over shows you love. You both seem pretty funny. And now, how to make a solid two hours of work go by? Um, that's for sure. Keep up the uh, keep keep it up, and just know you guys are appreciated out there. I appreciate that. Uh, your support is definitely means a lot to us and thanks for listening to us for that long and sticking with us even though i i know sometimes you get sick of somebody after listening to them for so long <laughs> i don't know I, I i think andrew is probably the funniest out of the two of us i don't know your 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 impersonation of i think it was like a horse or something like that <laughs> that i think if you look back at the bestest moments the bestest moments of ataki spirit i think that goes down as number one of all time was <laughs> was having you do different sounds and they were nothing what i asked it was like it was something like do a dog sound and you're like like that's a freaking horse Chris, what, what the hell are you doing no, it was a horse sound. I, 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 I did admit that. That and it was pretty I that was funny enough that I had to let mom hear that. That yeah, was yeah. <laughs> that was a little bit that was a little embarrassing, honestly. Cannot believe you'd fail that so miserably. Uh let's see. We have Adolfo M says, Hi. First, let me say how much of a fan I am of your podcast. Thank you so much. You're not a fan, you're a friend. Hey, well, it's it's difficult to be a fan because they all they do is just you know create cool air. Uh, yeah, we don't need it. We we've got cool plenty air. of fans in here. Yeah, don't need don't need more fans. Um, <laughs> anyways, I went ahead and subscribed to your YouTube channel as well. Thank you so much. Uh, it's always cool to put a face to the voices. What really appeals to me is the nuance and fair opinions you have in anime in general. Have you thought about doing videos of your older podcast discussions? Your podcast on fan service and trap characters were extremely well done. I definitely get uh, definitely get you more exposure and views. I, I think if anything, we'd probably just re record them with both of us if we do, because that is definitely something that I really wanted to go back and do. Is a lot of those main topic ideas that I think were really interesting to dive into. That yeah, we're not going to re record a podcast on that same topic, but now we can do it in video format. But I don't want to take those discussions and just throw them on YouTube as audio only because it doesn't help with the algorithm and people don't necessarily want to have just audio on YouTube. The only ones that I think I'm going to take exception on is I think I want to take all the fairy tale stuff, uh, fairy cast stuff, because it's not like we're going to be able to re-record our, our reaction to each of those segments of episodes. So those I think would do okay in making them into a video format audio only onto YouTube, but... Yeah, definitely a lot of those old topics I'd love to do video discussions on just to, you know, expand the audience and give... Because technically, like I mentioned before, a lot of our YouTube listeners, our viewers, are going to be new people. Um, that cross-pollinization of the two doesn't really work out that well, but that'd be cool. Definitely interested in it. If I can get Chris on in front of a camera for it. <laughs> Uh, see, also says as your uh, as for your latest podcast, it was quite informative on how Anime Strike uh, came and went. Uh, that was our post mortem on anime, uh, Amazon and anime. They had a great series, and I think that not too many uh, streaming sites would take a chance on Killing Bites, Happy Sugar Life, Magic Girl site, especially with how many people on social media overreact to so all of these sorts of shows nowadays overreact to these sorts of shows nowadays. Um, but I'm glad to see, uh, I'm glad they did uh, stream them since they were intense and captivating, captivating shows. Uh, a few thoughts came to mind while listening to the podcast. Now that was interesting. Cause I don't remember. 
I'm so, I don't remember Sh Happy Sugar Life was on their platform, huh? Killing Bites for sure was on there because we were kind of shocked that they were technically pretty uncensored with that version. Um, and I know Magical Girl Sight was definitely on there. And I do agree with you. Those are definitely ones that are so... They're very violent shows. Like, every single one of those are very violent shows. And Magical Sight, even more so kind of unsettling, um, especially with the beginning of the, of the series. Killing Bites, I can see getting picked up by Sentai Filmworks. I think they already did. But yeah, I do agree with you that, that they definitely would probably not do as well on a lot of other sites. But that's that's where Sentai Filmworks has the option of doing that. Because they've already done that with other shows where they jump in there. Oh yeah, nobody's going to pick up like Radio Hiller. I see Sentai Filmworks picking up a lot of those shows. Uh, anime licensing is extremely com convoluted. Cabinary was on Amazon, uh, then Funimation, and now the movie recaps are on Netflix. Uh, Dropkick on My Devil started off on Amazon. But the second season ended up on Crunchyroll. Uh, Takagi-san was on Crunchyroll Funimation, and its second season ended up on Netflix. Um, yeah, that's that was weird. <laughs> well, that was the same as uh, um, Psyche K was on, uh, I believe Funimation or was Crunchyroll. Was it Funimation? I thought it was Crunchyroll. It was probably Crunchyroll, but and now it's on Netflix. Uh, this makes for incomplete collections of shows that uh, that do collect physical media. Oh, this makes it incomplete collections for those to do physical uh, media. Uh, most anime shows that were on Anime Strike Amazon Originals ends up being released by Sentai. Netflix doesn't do any or many physical releases outside of Be the Beginning, Violet Evergarden, and the upcoming Evangelion series. Uh, those are technically all being done by um, all the anime, not technically Netflix. So they just somehow managed to get the physical. Uh, release from them be the beginnings the only um offness to that because that was technically had a physical release in japan as well but um yeah do you think these uh you think we'll ever get those split seasons on disc someday i finally purchased a region free blu-ray player just to import certain shows that didn't get a u.s release importing can be uh too much of a bother for some people and that's when the piracy comes into picture hurting the chances of a physical copy. Do you think Amazon will ever go back to focus on anime, uh, anime and Amazon on, or Amazon, anime on Amazon or Amazon anime, since it's a nice ring to it. It'll be great to have some more, uh, no Itamina shows or anime that is off the beaten path, such as, uh, Tatsuki's follow up to Kiyomono, uh, Kimono friends, uh, Kimakusa. That's right. That's another one that's stuck on Amazon. Kimakusa. You keep reminding me all this stuff. I don't like this email. <laughs> Thanks again. The great content and keep up the amazing work. Uh, a lot to unpack there. Yeah, I do agree. The there's a very there's very much so a frustration with uh, certain series kind of jumping to different brands. I think one of my earlier experience of that in physical when I'm collecting physical media, my first experience with that really was. Um, I think probably, what was it? There was something that was in... Psychopass? Because I believe Psychopass was split up amongst a couple of uh, groups, or was it no, darker now than Fun black? Now Funimation has all that. Um, there was something that was with NIS America that eventually transferred over to another company with its sequels. I know one example Chris technically has is Sound Iphonium. Yeah. Um since Pony Can had the first season of that and I believe Funimation or Crunchyroll got the second season. So or was it Sentai Filmworks? Somebody else got the second season. So it's like, yeah, you know that's not going to have the same release structure. I mean, I not that I want that. <laughs> it's not that I I'd want to have another gigantic box, but it's still one of those things that you, you like that formality or that uniformity you know, of the the releases. And technically those pony cam releases even though they were stupidly expensive, they are beautiful when you do like the artwork of the show. It is nice to have that that artwork in like large form. I mean, that I was even though I didn't like Etotama I was tempted to get the set because I like the art style and they had these really huge, gorgeous boxes for them. But yeah, it, it is. Did Pony Can do the physical release of that too? Oh, huh, never mind. Apparently, season two did get released by Pony Can too. 
And look, it gets negative reviews just like the first season did because why? Cost, right? <laughs> yep. <laughs> Cost. Um, so yeah, good luck, Chris, buying this. But no, it, that because that was another big thing, is and that was especially the case with the NIS America, is that anything that in it... Oh, there you go. Um, I think uh, Eccentric Family had that issue, too, because that was an NIS America release, and then the second season came out and went to somebody else. But yeah, when they make these really extravagant, cool boxes, and then somebody else gets the next season, it's it's never it never is never uniform, and it bugs the fire out of me <laughs> to be sure. But then there's also the issue of of yeah, especially with the case of Netflix. Do you ever see anybody getting the physical distribution rights to Psychic K? I don't think I don't I don't see it happening. Now I can see somebody going after something like Evangelion. I never had a doubt that that we would get eventually get. Well, I did have a doubt. Um, not as much of a doubt of Evangelion specifically ever getting a physical release because somebody is going to be like, this has to get a physical release. We can make a fortune on this. But something like Psyche K or shoot, uh, as much as I love TZ Master Takaki-san, I don't see that being popular enough that somebody's going to go out of their way to get that physical release license. And now it's stuck on Netflix. And these other companies have less of a desire to go after it because all they're going to get is physical distribution rights to it. The hope is, is that somebody like Sentai Filmworks, who seems that that is their primary source of income, I assume, I don't know the exacts of their finances, would hope that they would be going after stuff like that. Anything that had, that, that's like the, their initiative recently, it seems like they're going after Amazon stuff. But what extent that would that be? Will they eventually get Onihei and all those other titles that aren't as popular to get physical releases of them? It sucks. That is, that is That has always been an issue with these these titles jumping around from place to place in both uniformity of collectors and being able to get everything because i want to say there's another there's another one i don't know there's there's a lot of examples and i'm trying to remember all of them but there is a there's a lot of examples of of different companies trading hands of where stuff is released at and it, it really does suck thoughts i'm all over the place in thoughts right now so (laughs) Um, I was actually, you, you had mentioned something about, um, you, you were talking about, um, just different distributors and I was trying to think of how, how I'm, I'm, I'm making rent. Like I said, I'm, I'm in thought, thought process of streaming and streaming rights and, and all that stuff and, and ways around the system. So like I said, I'm in la la land right now. Yeah, a big issue right now is is also when there's something that hasn't been around for so long. I I I equally have an issue with DVDs to Blu-ray. Like when you have a first season that was back in the day with DVD only, and then now you have another season, and now they're suddenly doing Blu-ray releases of it. It's like I hate that. They're like that bugs me. The uniformity. I want them all to line up to each other all perfectly. And now you're saying you're never going to do a DVD re- or a Blu-ray release of this one. Mm-hmm. Why? Uh, that was that was a big issue with uh, Natsumi's Book of Friends. I wanted to buy the Natsumi's Book, Natsumi's Book of Friends series, but like some of them had Blu-ray and some of them have DVD, and it's like I want them all the same though. And that that technically made me pause in buying them because I wanted that uniformity of them. Um, then you had some of them were done by NIS America, and they had the big huge boxes. Some of them were Blu-ray only in these small slim boxes. Um, some had DVD slim only, Blu-ray slim only. It was it was it was a mayhem. So, <laughs> yeah, right. Um, so, yeah, do you think we'll ever get those split seasons on disc someday? I some of them, yes. But unfortunately, like I said, if you have some like dropkick on my devil, I don't necessarily see that one ever getting a a physical release. But like I said, it seems like Sentai is doing a really good job right now of trying to get all that back catalog from Amazon, not from Amazon, but from the studios for that we worked with uh, Amazon specifically. So. Yeah, there's also the the issue of, um, you know, taking you you're you're taking a chance. I mean, if it's a popular enough of a show, you're 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 pretty much guaranteed. Um, but you will be taking a chance if you go to hold out on some random show um, of if if it didn't get enough of a pickup, and you know, the two companies have the split. And one, and they do happen to both release it. You're gonna have to take the chance with of either was it was it popular enough to get somebody else to rescue the both licenses and re-release them as a as a complete set, or take the chance of 
yeah, I'm going to buy it and then buy it a second time if if it does happen to happen. Yep, yep. Um, do we think Amazon will ever get back into the picture of anime? No, I don't. I honestly don't see that. I, I do, like we mentioned with that particular podcast, I do want them to. I look looking, and that was mainly my statement on them, me wanting them to come back was mainly around the idea that I feared the buyout from Sony to Crunchyroll and creating a monopoly, essentially. Now, seeing that the Justice Department is currently extending that uh, investigation and everything, it does look more like it won't happen. But if it were to happen, yes, I want Amazon to come back because I want somebody else in the picture. I can't, I don't, and it, and it sucks me. I'll, <laughs> you're basically saying, hey, anybody, even Amazon do something because they didn't do that great of a job at all. Um, but it's still just wanting somebody else in the picture to give that competition in the field. And But again, I don't see it happening just because of how, They've essentially at this point cut and run. They're just they left their hands up and walked away essentially. So it yeah, sucks, it, but it it does feel like they got burned pretty bad, and that's why we pretty much gave up all hope of them coming back. But it it will really depend on uh our not not our our assumption is that they got burned really bad. We don't know how bad badly they got burned. Maybe they're just, you know, taking a break, trying to reassess how they're going to deal with it, and then they'll try and come back in a in a big way. But it feels like they got burned really bad. Yeah, the the assumption is that there is still I mean, at least even with Amazon Japan, they still see it as an option. Like it, there there's there's no doubt that Amazon Japan doesn't see that they need to get into the anime world somehow. And that's that's the big question mark that I have is how how influential can Amazon Japan be with the entirety of Amazon itself? How much can they say, hey, look, this is a thing over here and you kind of if you want to do video streaming, you need to kind of get into this. And they're going, well, last time it didn't work out. It's like, but you, it's kind of a big deal here. <laughs> it's kind of a big deal. I mean, I think that was technically what. I, I honestly believe I think that was what drove Netflix to get into anime as much as they did was because they made a, a Netflix Japan group and that group probably said, look, you need anime on this platform. Where is your anime? Oh, well, we have like some stuff from this Aniplex company. We have some. No, you need to start making some like you need some here because it's kind of a big deal here. And I, I so I have no doubt that was the one of the big initiatives that drove them to start getting more anime titles on Netflix was because they made a Japan branch, and that's kind of a big deal there. So the hope is the same thing will happen with Amazon, but that's just my my pie in the sky kind of <laughs> mentality there. Um, what was the other one that said? Um, that's an interesting concept. What the Amazon Japan pushing them? Yeah, I, was- I, I, I didn't I didn't really think about it, but that that does make sense. They open up a branch down there. They want to get into it. And that that market is highly uh restricted to you can't have the license unless you're on the production committee if you're on the production committee you get you get licenses or you go and hunt down the the licenses so the natural inclination is just okay here take money give me give me license when it comes out and that's how how they end up with it so yeah it makes a lot of sense i'm glad you agree (laughs) I hadn't uh, thought about it from that perspective, but yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Uh, also says, one of the other questions was, it'd be great to have more Noitamana shows or anime off the beaten path, um, such as Tatsuki's follow-up on Kamen Rider Friends, Kamen Rider Kusa. That, um, Noitamana itself is not an issue. They're still coming out. It's just on different platforms. It's just that the thing that happened with Amazon, and I don't know if you know this or not, the thing with Amazon was that they purchased a exclusivity from Noitamina for a period of time, and that has already expired. So those those titles have already been on other platforms. One of them, recent example, was uh, The Promised Neverland went to Funimation, which was originally a Noitamina uh, series. And like I said, pretty much all the other ones, I don't know what the current one is. I don't think they had one this season, did they? I haven't, I haven't been keeping an eye on it recently. No, I mean, like they, they yeah, kind it, of, it just wasn't one that we were... they kind of been bleh lately. Given was an, was one of the ones that I was like, eh, I'm not really 
yeah, we we watched Millionaire Detective when that was on Funimation. Um, uh, so the current one, I guess, would be Backflip. So yeah, Backflip right now is on Crunchyroll. And before then was Promise Neverland 2. 2.43 was before that. Millionaire Detective. Uchitama, Have You Seen My Tama. Psycho Pass 3, Given. Sarah's on my... So they're they're getting elsewhere. I think the last one that was technically on Amazon was uh, Banana Fish. Seems right. like it. I think so. Yeah, I want to quit before that and after the rain. So they're, they're, those titles are still going elsewhere. So don't worry about that. You just got to have to find them. Um, but yeah... Kimura Q said, I hope somebody picks that up because that was that was actually an interesting, interesting little thing. So yeah, thanks for the thanks for the great questions. That was uh, definitely a lot to go over. <laughs> uh let's see if we can get a couple more in here. Kevin Eckbert says, uh Ebert Hart, sorry. Kevin Ebert Hart says, uh, what was your first anime, or better yet, what was the first anime that made you realize you love anime? I think um, because we it's hard to really tell what the first anime was. I I usually tell most people my first anime that I knew it was anime would have probably been Tenchi Moyo. I don't know if I watched Tenchi Moyo or Akira first, but those are like my earliest memories of what I knew was anime. Like I've been now and been informed by my friend who at the time was getting into a lot of this stuff. Oh, this is what anime is. And I think it was either Akita or or Tenshi Moyu, but uh, I I I believe Akita was definitely the point which I was like, oh, yeah, I love anime <laughs> for sure. That 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 movie just blew me away for sure. I I we had kind of discussed this before, but we the the anime before we really realized what anime was. I mean, I I go back as far back as. It was called Voltron in my my time. Um, come to find out, it's called Golian. Um, and I I think um, I think we discussed it before. Was uh, Thundercats is in a similar vein. Mm-hmm. Um, but at the same time, like like we said, that we didn't know what anime was. So um, fast forward twenty years, yeah. Um, Andrew introducing me to um, Tenchi Moyo. And then saying, hey, this is a thing and going down that road with him. That's pretty much was Tenchi my first love. Maybe um, I I did love uh, Sailor Moon and, and I will admit to that. I really I mean, so much so I s- named my son after one of the characters in the show. Um, I really did love Sailor Moon. So it, 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 I, I do go back and forth between the two. Um, I probably would lean more towards Tenchi, um, falling in love with, uh, some of, uh, a lot of the characters in that show, um, versus I just really, 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 really love Sailor Moon's storyline. Take your pick, whichever one. Yeah. And it, it is interesting what what concepts it itself made you love the anime, and I I think it was a lot to do with. And again, this is that whole ooh edgy stuff thing for a child is a little more uh, risky and and exciting to to look at when you're younger and you know you're not supposed to have it. But like the violenceness and the adult nature of what those stories were, it is it is one of those things where you kind of go, yeah, technically I probably shouldn't have been watching that at a young age, but it's one of those things where that introduction to those concepts of more adult storytelling was technically the allure to it is like i felt as my young self that this is what i wanted i want something that was more than just your typical cartoons that is just doing really stupid stuff it was doing something more it was telling a story it was getting me emotional it was getting me uh you know scared for the characters or excited for the characters that I've never really experienced with anything else. That was what anime was doing for me. It was that, again, it, technically looking back again, probably shouldn't have been something I was should be watching, but at the same time, it was more mature. It was giving me concepts that were difficult to really kind of comprehend, but it was something that excited me. So, and yes, boobies. <laughs> Real go naked boobies. <laughs> Edgy moments. Yes, that's still in there too. But yeah. 
it was it was it was that excitement that definitely made me fall in love with it, and even that went even further, getting into stuff like Evangelion and stuff like that, where it was really starting to bend my mind. I'm like, holy crap, this stuff is doing some insane stuff. Uh, Mermaid Scar, going down to the video store and going into the kids' cartoon section and finding things like Mermaid Scar and all these other really violent stuff, Armitage and and Battle Angel. And they're right next to Looney Tunes stuff. And you're going, yeah, this stuff has nudity and stuff in it. But sure, this goes in this section. <laughs> Let me rent this. <laughs> no, good thing I don't have to tell them my ID because they think this is cartoons, apparently. So that was like the the ignorance of society back then. And not understanding that just because it's a colored, uh, it's it's filled with lines colored and that it's not children's stuff was the greatest thing because then we could just jump in there and grab it and didn't have to worry about yeah giving id or telling them how old you are and and mom not questioning it if you're having her rent it for you <laughs> and then taking it home and getting two vcrs together so you can copy it and watch it forever after that <laughs> it was good stuff it was good stuff totally uh, totally didn't do that with love blue girl no, definitely, no, definitely not, definitely not. <laughs> or mouse uh, last one we have, last question that we have is from Dr. Wick says, uh, I would love an episode on the best board games and or RPGs based on an anime. I have never seen a board game based off an anime. I'm sure they're out there. Um, but I'm not a big board game person. I know there's a big fandom around that right now, especially, but I just never cared for them. But I could tell you RPGs. <laughs> Uh, we talked about this thing at the very beginning. It's not a big deal, but Genshin Impact is definitely... It's not based off an anime, but it is an anime style. Um, a game based on an anime. I don't know that I really have any... My favorite of all time is going to be L- Lotus War. I, I absolutely love that game. But that is a very, very niche one. You're going to have to emulate to get it because there's no not a lot of dreamcasts available anymore and to find an a, an actual copy of that game it would be kind of rough um does it have to be specifically an anime or just anime styling because it says based on anime because we got tanto kiori i really really do love that game um i uh finally got the actual cards so that's a lot hopefully um maybe someday we'll actually get to sit down and do that but i don't expect that we will because it's a lot of time invested for something that not uh is a hit or miss on whether or not andrew will enjoy it so yeah uh but yeah it's i agree with andrew it's it's there's not a lot that we've experienced as far as games physical versions outside of just anime styling i mean you got your final fantasies you've got your um like andrew said genshin impact those are the ones off the top of my head um but yeah there's tons of them out there I, I can cheat and say an anime RP, uh, an RPG based on an anime that technically the anime was based on the RPG <laughs> <laughs> Valkyria Chronicles Valkyria Chronicles there's uh, um Symphony the the Tales games yeah see I I, I have yeah Vesperia especially the the anime of Vesperia was amazing and this the game was great too but Persona the, the um you see I have a I don't. I, I have a few games that are made based on the anime, but I haven't played them yet. Like I have Punchline, but I haven't played that yet. Um, I'm I'm certain that it's not. <laughs> I go with the expectation it's not going to be that good. <laughs> I just don't expect anything based on a, a game based off an anime to be any good. Um, that's yes, that's the main reason why I don't go flying off the kilter and pointing out Sword Art Online while they're fun. Um, they're, they're not amazing. <laughs> yeah. The, the thing with like, the thing with the sword on sword art online games, which I've only played like one and a half of them. Um, and I haven't even, I haven't finished them because at some point it just gets so repetitive. repetitive. Yeah. It, they're just not, they don't have a good gameplay cycle. Now, the thing that I did enjoy about the sword art online games was getting more about certain characters. Um, like I, I always mention the fact that, uh, his sister, Suguru, um, 
one of the games actually explains her. Um, they they give her context, and I've never I've never cared for the character. I think she's cute, but I've never cared for her as a character in the story. And it wasn't until I got this perspective that this story in the game gives you of what she went through while he was in the game. It it raised my level of appreciation for that character hugely, and I started liking that character, which is. Yeah, I hope that it's technically canon. You know, canon. <laughs> That's the big concern. Is is it canon? I'm assuming it is. I, my assumption is that it probably just wasn't adapted into the anime, and they decided to put it into the game because that's her story. It's it's okay. Well, that's technically her story. Let's put it in the game. Um, but yeah, Hatsune Miku games. We finally got a chance to sit down and play some Hatsune Miku games over the last couple of weeks, and it was a lot of fun. Um, that was a, technically an anime art style. Um. So yeah, I, I I told Chris when I was back going from California, I'm like, first thing we need to do when we get back there, we we need to play Hatsumiku. He's like, why? I'm like, do we really want to play Hatsumiku? And we didn't do it until here recently. <laughs> so I'm like, yeah, he turned it on the other night and was playing, and I walked in. I'm like, oh no, and I I had, and then for the next three days, it was like, I can't stop listening to my Miku songs. What the heck, Andrew? It's like it's like one of those things where I turn that on, and it's like it, he can't help but be drawn, and it's like the the bug light. He just kind of come in and sit down. We're playing this. Okay, we're playing this. Um, and, I still and wanna... know that the, the itch is not scratched yet, so we do still need to, at least another Ooh. night or two. I do kind of like the Fate Stella games. Now, they are the usual beat-up massive amounts of numbers of enemies, but they had some really good stories in there. Um, they were they were pretty fun to play. So if you like Fate, uh, the Fate series stuff... You could check out the Fate of Stella games, but it's so funny. They are because... technically similar to the sort of like Sword Art Online games, where the cycle, the combat cycle, eventually gets boring. Yeah, that's that 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 that's one of those things that I have a love hate relationship with those games. I, I those types of games. I I like the um, the Zelda versions of those, and I I like it, and then I get so freaking bored of the 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 gameplay, and it's like. I do like that at least the Zelda versions tried to add something different to it. Um, a lot of environmental um, aspects to try and get get oh, something outside of just... Yeah, and that's technically what the Estella games do. It, it has the whole node system and capture the flag kind of thing. Yeah. Where you have to take over this area and then defend it. And then you have to go to this one, but while you leave it, you, it can get attacked again. Then you have to go back. Right. But that again, that's an aspect of if it's a little bit more difficult... You're just spending a lot of time running back and forth, right? Is, is it, it does it add environmental thing to it though? Not just the capture the flag, but if you do something here to trigger something to happen that causes a change in not necessarily a capture of the flag, but I guess like the 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 bomb choose is is one of the things that they did in in one of the places there, or the capturing the which was a capture of the flag per se, but going to the fairy fountain and getting a, a power there um, and, and using that power in another place Similar. on the map. Similar, Similar stuff. stuff. Yeah. yeah. I think they all kind of borrow from each other anyways. It's probably the same company that's doing them all. Well, I, think, I do know that the, the people who do Dynasty Warriors is the one who did the Hyrule Warriors. So, mm. i.e. Warriors. Yeah. I don't know. Um, outside of that, just not caring about it being based on anime. Um, I've been trying to do, finish uh, 13 Sentinels, which is really incredibly awesome looking. It's based on the Odin Sphere people, um, which they do incredible work uh, art style wise. And the story seemed like it was really fantastic as well. Um, yeah, like you mentioned, the Tales series. Specifically, I haven't liked Tales in a long time, but I did like Vesperia and Symphonia. Um, Zillia kind of Zillia two kind of ruined that series for me, and I haven't really got into it since then. Um, but they usually have very cliche stories. That's that's the only problem with tales. You realize they have very cliche stories in the end. But um, I think my most favorite anime style games has Ateliers. been the. Um, I love the Ateliers. My the games the only anime style games that are not based on the anime, but they are technically anime style that I actually thoroughly enjoyed from beginning to end has been the Val- Valkyria Chronicles series, um, have been enjoying the 13th Sentinel series. Um, what was the other one? I had another one that was in my head, and I forgot it already. We're, in, we're enjoying Genshin Impact, so. Yeah. Yeah, the Atelier series is 
I love that series so much. I, I just recently went and bought the entire series. I that's how much I love that. But that is a very niche game. If you don't like the um, the build something alchemy system, alchemy system, you're Gather not alchemy. gonna love it. <laughs> yeah, and it's funny because like a lot of that is like they've always had a problem with environments. They're very boring environments. That's always been their issue is going out and, and exploring and stuff has never been fun in those games. And I think they've improved it recently, but they're still not quite there. They need to improve their, their adventures aspects of that game. Yeah. I, I can see people who kind of enjoy the more Minecrafty type games probably will like that. Um, mostly because it is that type of, if, uh, if you've ever heard of, um, Reseteer, Yeah. Rasseteer, that that is a very very niche game. Not very many people know about it. Um, it it's it's another one of those games that I really really love. Um, and th- this all goes into the type of game that I like, which is the kind of crafty type. Um, point it, it gets completely away from the typical RPG type things and starts going into the more crafting side of the 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 game. If you like those types of games, you'll like the Alteliers. You'll like the, like I said, Reseteer. Um, you'll like um, th- that that type of game. All right. I think that's good. Um, again, that's that's all of our questions. So it's up to you guys now. This is a call to arms. We need more questions <laughs> for the podcast. So, but yeah, we hope you guys enjoyed this discussional podcast episode. Going through the news that seemed important to us. It should be important to you. Give some questions for our community members. Thanks so much for all the questions you guys sent in. Hope you guys enjoy the discussions in this discussional podcast. And as always, if you do want to support us, just tell other people about us. That always is the best way to support us. Otherwise, we do really much so appreciate our Patreon supporters. Those who go and follow our YouTube channel does all help us in some way, shape, or form. And we do appreciate every bit of support that we get from you guys. So, yep, that's it. I thank you all for listening. We hope you all enjoyed. And you all take care. Oh,